This is a daily common sight in the Wau refugee camp in South Sudan, as the people queue to get their daily food rations. These internally displaced persons fled their homes after they were attacked and have sought shelter in the camp. But the massive influx of refugees makes living conditions in the camp quite difficult, especially for young children. My brother went back to the house to collect water. I was given a call with his phone. And that call respond, uh, is, they tell me that your brother is dead. We go to see his sister-in-law. She's pregnant and due this month, but James stays behind. He says it's too painful for her and the children to see him. He reminds them of the husband and father they no longer have. And Sarah, earlier this morning, we went to one of the neighborhoods that many of those refugees had fled from. It's still largely deserted, but there we met one Dinka young man who was pointing out that he lived side by side with the newer ethnic community, that this was not a personal problem between them, nor should they allow it to be one. He went on to say that... South Sudan's fight for independence against Sudan, from his perspective, was a cause that was worth dying for, that it was worth the sacrifice and the bloodshed. But he said, this, what's happening to our country right now, is simply pointless killing, Sarah. I want to ask you uh, uh, about the rebel leader, uh, the former Vice President Machar, and uh, whether or not he's responded to sort of the tough talk from the president, and if the government actually knows exactly where he is. Well, we actually asked President Salva Kiir if he tried to reach out to him directly, as tense as the situation between these two individuals may be. They do have a fairly lengthy history together, and he said no, he didn't know where to reach him or how to reach him. Mashad has been saying that he did not try to launch a coup, but he has also been very adamant in his demands that his political allies be released. And at this point, there's been no indication whatsoever that he is going to be backing down from that 
that demand. We have not heard anything specific from, from him as this deadline does near that four-day deadline that was given by African leaders is going to be ending tomorrow. So it's very much a wait-and-see scenario at this stage. And understandably, so many of those civilians are very much on edge. No one here wants to see this situation get any worse, Sarah. We continue to see violence occur in multiple locations throughout the country. We're seeing families still fleeing and on the run uh, from attackers who are, who are hunting them down, who are looking for civilians and who are chasing them. And that violence hasn't changed uh, in some of these locations since the peace agreement was signed.